think that things are going to turn out differently, huh? Well, the massively successful Jurassic World Evolution has arrived on the Nintendo Switch. Frontier development have certainly bitten off quite a chunk when trying to port over this hugely intensive title to the Nintendo Switch. With others like City Skylines failing to quite meet the performance standards we'd expect, how then does Jurassic World Evolution fare? Will it be a premature extinction or will life find a way? Let's find out. Stubborn, life will not be contained. In terms of storyline, you're thrust into the role of park manager on the first of eight fledgling dinosaur parks. And as you'd expect, it's your goal to get them running smoothly and increase revenue while undertaking missions for one of three different areas. Entertainment, science and security. Each stage will have three core missions that you have to undertake in these areas and they're more scripted in terms of how they play out, which was a smart idea as it led to the feeling that you were taking part in the story and they usually had more of a set piece to them. For example, in one, the security guy decided the best way to check out our security protocols would be to have you open the gate to the cage allow the dinosaur to escape into the park and run absolute havoc, and then pilot a chopper to manually tranquilize that said dinosaur. While entirely ludicrous in its principle, it made for a much more exciting mission than some of the standard ones. As far as gameplay and controls, the left stick moves around the overall camera and the right rotates the screen. Triggers are used to zoom in and out, and on the left of your screen, you'll have several different menus which are accessible by simply pressing the up and down on the D-pad. Controls are slick and well designed and very easy to pick up despite the complexity of the game. And through using the different menu systems, you'll be spending the accumulated wealth on either upgrading your core facilities, such as buildings which allow you to send expeditions out to search for fossils, Hammond Creation Labs, which are used to then essentially grow your own dinosaurs, but you'll need to have discovered over 50% of the genome before you can do this. The menu layout is really sensible and, as mentioned, very easy to use. You can drag simply by holding down the A button and pull a fence where it needs to go, connect up power supplies, and each structure has its own leveling system. For example, allowing the power station to output more power, but which will also put more strain on it. There are guest facilities here as well, and you'll be juggling the reputation of your park, which then directly affects your island rating, which is shown here. The rating's based on the variety of dinosaur species you have, how safe the park is, and how much you've done to make the guests feel welcome and safe. If you've played any sim or management games in the past, then you'll feel right at home setting up your own restaurant, Whack Donald's, and tweaking the menu and prices to get just the right level of income per hour. Go too high and people get fed up and your rating drops. Go too low and you start to lose money. Once your park begins to get more established, you'll receive occasional optional missions which will boost your reputation in one of those aforementioned three areas. Some missions will positively boost one area while negatively impacting another, so there's a balancing act to this as well. I wasn't expecting was to be able to control all the vehicles directly if you choose to, so you can get behind the wheel of the Jeep and then manually take the tranquilizer gun to tranquilize and then possibly sell or heal a sick animal. The same goes for the helicopter. When those pesky raptors broke loose, I decided to take the helicopter directly because if you leave it up to the computer, it can just take a bit too long. Again, a nice choice because it meant that the player could improve the outcomes, but it wasn't essential for them to do so. Terrain manipulation and general construction, rotating of buildings, placement and setting up the power nodes all feels surprisingly good on Switch. I was disappointed to see that in handheld there was no touch screen as pinching to zoom or twisting your fingers to spin the camera just seems like a sensible addition. The thing to note here is that this is the full fat experience. There's an incredible amount of depth while also being very accessible to new players. And there's a real wealth of content available. And once you've met the criteria for a particular park, you'll unlock one of the new ones. A nice addition is that certain dinosaurs will require two of the same building, which you can only achieve by having them on simultaneous islands. It means that you'll hop back and forward between your parks, and it gives the game a good feeling of continuity, while still allowing you to then use your new developments back on the original islands. As the game progresses, it gets much more difficult, with weather becoming a real issue, and the variety and species of dinosaurs becoming much more difficult to contain. 
learning. The learning curve is almost perfect, and I found by the time you reach those more challenging areas, you have a good grasp of how to tackle tricky situations. One aspect that's perhaps handled not quite as well are the notifications for when an incident occurs. These are shown at the top of the screen, and particularly in the earlier stages, you may find yourself scratching your head trying to work out exactly what they're referring to. The landscape manipulation tools are really simple to use, and when building your enclosures, you'll need to think about the needs of specific dinosaurs. If their comfort level drops too low, then they'll begin trying to escape. And this is where the uh, dung really hits the fan, but was also where I had some of my most entertaining moments. And if you'd rather just concentrate on building a park with none of the other things to worry about, then you can simply go to sandbox mode and create to your heart's content. Overall then, I really enjoy this style of game and I think the implementation on a console is done really well. Where things get a bit more contentious is in the next segment, where we look at visuals and performance. Overall, I give gameplay 18 out of 20, and the controls, they score 19 out of 20. In terms of the visuals and audio, well, things are a little bit mixed here. As you can see, early gameplay on the left is targeting 30 FPS. However, as your park grows, the developers had to make some compromises and as such, it drops down to a locked out 20. There are even some areas where it locks to 15 frames a second. When in docked mode, the visuals are actually really quite good, comparatively speaking, compared to other sim games. So I wonder if they went for visuals and that locked out 20, thinking that they were more important because the frame pacing seems pretty good and it is almost like they V-Sync locked it. It doesn't feel terrible until you either zoom in closely or have just transitioned from a menu into the main area. Different weather effects can also cause other issues, but when you drop into a first person view, you'll see a significant drop in performance. As far as handheld goes, well, this is Vaseline Central. They seem to have gone this time for higher frame rates at the cost of visual clarity, with it running at 30 FPS almost all the time and I'm guessing they thought that because it's on the small screen a drop in visual quality wouldn't really matter but I'm afraid I think they guessed wrong in handheld for me it's quite poor there are times in docked where the game looks absolutely great and some of those dinosaur designs are excellent the little genome splicing mechanic where you can mix and match the genomes of other species to essentially change the way some of your dinosaur skin looks or other characteristics is a really smart choice and one that's straight out of the films. And aside from those excellent designs of the 60 different dinosaur, they're surprisingly well animated and locking onto them and checking out the different statistics and which one in a group is the alpha, showing weight, size, age and giving you the option of renaming them were welcome details. It's worth noting that you can save and load your game whenever you want and load times for the most part were actually okay. And I didn't experience any crashes, which is quite rare these days. When we focus on the audio, well, it's excellent. Reactions, trials and errors, genetic mutations and unknowable... The voice acting of the different cast members are here and the dulcet tones of Dr. Ian Malcolm along with much of the original score, really added to the feeling of immersion. The same goes for the sounds of the different dinosaurs. The unnerving barks of the raptors or the roar of a T-Rex gave me shivers down my spine. When you zoom the camera into a group of people, you might hear local music playing or just the chit chat, and then the weather will change and the audio effects of the weather system were equally impressive. Understandably, visuals and performance have to take a big knock, particularly in handheld mode, because I think the option to go with clarity in docked actually works out for the most part and allows for an enjoyable experience. Visuals and performance score 12 out of 20, while conversely, the audio and sound design are excellent. Audio scores 18 out of 20. In terms of value then, well they're asking £50 for this one, which seems an awful lot of money. It's a game that I have absolutely loved playing, and it's a true reflection of the 1993 classic film. This is the complete version and as such has every piece of downloadable content available. And while that might not seem like something that's worthy of the price, let me put it into context for you. There are several different editions available on PC. You have the Deluxe Edition, the Premium Edition, which has quite a few of extra DLCs, and then there's the Jurassic Park Edition. Either way, the Premium Edition on its own is £70. You've also got the Campaign, the Challenge Modes, you have Sandbox Mode here if you just want to build your own park to your heart's content. There's a ton of content, but it is still undoubtedly pricey. Right now on Steam, the game is on offer. You can buy just the base version at 75% off 
taking it down to about eight or nine pounds, which is a bargain, particularly when you consider if you've got a semi-decent PC, it's gonna run and play a lot more smoothly. It's a difficult one to judge value on this because essentially you're getting an incredible amount of value, but the price is quite high. And the performance and visuals, not quite where I think they should be. I give value 14 out of 20. You think that things are gonna turn out differently, huh? Well, the ones before you did too. Because they Overall, I absolutely love Jurassic World Evolution and I'm really glad we've seen it on the Nintendo Switch. It certainly needs a patch or two and that price is going to be a touch too much for some people. But warts and all, it's a very well designed and enjoyable experience. It gets a Switch up score of 81%. But I will say, if you're a handheld player, certainly hold off until we have at least one or two patches and we'll make sure we update you with a new video when those drop let me know down in the comments if this is a game that you're interested in or if that price is too much and as always a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month if you enjoy the channel consider sticking around and as always for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya